We are also writing colleges. We have been, we've written all of the state departments of education. I mean, they, this needs to be addressed. For example, in the dorm rooms, they should have uh, ethernet ports and a lot of schools do have ethernet ports and phone lines for all the kids so that they're not having, all having uh, these devices on all the time. So I, I hear you, but I mean, distance and turning it on airplane mode whenever possible and getting time off the phone. And I think most kids I talk to, even ones that are on their phone a lot, they know, be it the radiation or, um, you know, just the, the addiction that when they're off their phone, they're happier. So, so have a little time off your phone and talk to your friends face to face. So what if their choice, though, is hold it in your hands, put it in your pocketbook, put it in your pocket, put it in your sock? Is it all the same? It's all different parts of your body. So you just you want a distance and you want it away from your head and from your, um, I apologize, from your, um, from your body, you know, from your, especially your breast tissue, which is a certain kind of tissue, actually. And is, is texting significantly better than using it to make a, a phone call or a FaceTime? It's pretty significant. Texting significantly is. Yeah. Okay. okay. Compared to um uh compared to voice calls or video calls. And also another thing you can do, this is a good one. If you're not using Bluetooth, turn off the Bluetooth antennas. There are many antennas on a phone. Turn the antennas off you're not using. If you're inside and you're using the Wi-Fi, turn off the cellular, turn off the 5G. Oh, another thing, to have less apps. The more apps you have that are running, updating, downloading, the more uh, radiation exposure. So get rid of apps you're not using and set them so that they uh, upgrade, like when you want to have control of that. And you need to learn to use airplane mode. Turn your phone on airplane mode more often. Okay, now let's assume that you get into a car and someone has their cell phone on in the car. They're not making a call. They're just sitting in the, you're driving the car, they're in the passenger seat and mm -hmm. they just are holding a phone that's on. Is this different than if I'm in sitting in my kitchen? Is their signal stronger? Is it more health risk? Or is it just like being three feet away in the kitchen? Yeah, that's a good question. So when you're in your car, actually, the signal can be, your exposure can be more for a couple reasons. One, your cell phone, even when you're not using it, it's always checking in with the nearest cell phone tower. That's why cell towers are called cell, because there's a cell around the tower where the tower services, meaning the tower is connecting to all the phones in itself. But when you're in a car, you're moving from cell to cell. You're actually passing by many cell towers, right? That means that you're going from one cell one cell tower to another cell tower. And each time your phone is actually doing a, like a digital handshake saying, bye, I'm leaving that cell tower area. Now I'm going to the next one. And those are little, little, little intense moments as the phone is traveling. So when a phone is traveling, there can be a higher exposure plus you're in a metal situation where metal can, the radiation can bounce in unexpected ways, reflect off the metal. So you can sometimes get higher levels of exposure when you're in a confined metal space. Elevators too. Turn your phone off in an elevator, especially like, let's say you've got it on your body, which I wish you didn't, but turn it off in an elevator because it can really go to really high power in that situation. So, so um Yes, if you're sitting next to someone, that elevates the level, not as much as if you had the phone to your head. All it doesn't do that all over your body, but it can it can increase it. So we but, say don't use a phone in the car. But um, it's better if it's on in the car is still much better than texting in the car and texting in the car is still better than making a phone call in the car. It's never good to text in a car. Okay. Unless, I mean, if you're the driver, certainly. I mean, the right. passenger. Oh, okay, the passenger. Um, texting would be better than streaming video. So, like, if you have kids, you know, don't stream videos. Kids do not, shouldn't be streaming videos in the car. You can pre-download 
any, like, let's say you're going on a car drive, been there, right? Sometimes you're going for hours in the car, have that, have all those movies already on the devices and don't have the device on a lap. Even, you know, I'll put, always use a pillow or something to keep it off the lap. That's another thing is keeping laptops and tablets off the lap. But in general, you are saying that we are better off if the phone's going to be on in the car, it's still much better to be on and not making a phone call than it is to be on in the car. So you were saying this is making a phone call in a car, leaving it on for an emergency is still much better than actually conducting a call in the car. So it's yes, when you conduct a call in the car, there's going to be much more. Okay. Anytime the phone is working or doing something or updating, talking, moving, that is creating wireless signals. Those signals have radi- our radio frequency. It's modulated pulse radio frequency radiation. And then some of that's being absorbed into your body. Okay. So I am off the phone for a second now and I go to my laptop. Is my laptop the same? What, what's How does it compare to the cell phone if I'm using a wireless laptop? So Wi-Fi is radio frequency radiation. It's the same kind of radiation as from a cell phone. It's radio frequency. Um, it's a little bit different in depending on that uh, has to do with the modulation. And it's actually a very erratic signal. Uh, so it does not mean safer. Wi-Fi is not necessarily safer, especially when people are putting it right up against their body. So when you put a laptop or a tablet, the radiation is coming out of the antennas and some of it is being absorbed into your body, maybe your chest, uh, some into your head, not as intensely as a phone right to the head, but there is uh, what many scientists would say is a significant exposure that's happening to more of your body. And um, it, uh, you know, putting it on your lap, you're getting also the magnetic fields, another kind of non-ionizing uh, radiation exposure. So when you put it really close to your body, you're getting more exposure. Again, distance. Okay. And then what about if there's just Wi-Fi in the house in general? I'm 40 feet away from the router. The Wi-Fi is on. Um, is this a concern? Is it better to have it off? Always? It I mean, is much that- better to have it off It because... The Wi-Fi router is putting out signal throughout your whole house, right? Trying to always say what the router is always going, I'm available. It's letting, you know how when you turn your device on and it knows what Wi-Fi is around? Um, So it's always trying to show all the devices that it's around. And there's something called a beacon signal, which is just always going out. Uh, And that has been found to be... uh, have a biological uh, implications, make it more biologically active. So it's best to turn the Wi-Fi off at night, at least. And then if you can get a setup, like I'm talking to you right now, I have an ethernet cord. This isn't it, but this is one I have in my house. And then I have a adapter and I connect it. And then I connect this to the laptop. It's also faster. It's much faster to have your devices connected with a wire when you're in like a fixed location at your desk or so forth. And there's also adapters for tablets. So, um, but just once again, though, to understand like how big a deal this is, there's Wi-Fi on the house. It's 40 feet away. You know, it's in on. on It goes through the whole house. So Uh it's elevating through the whole house. That's what its job is. But I know where it's located. So if I'm 40 feet away from the location where it starts from, is that okay? Or are you saying I'm still exposing myself? We would recommend that you start by turning it off at night and when you're not using it. And then if you can get wires, that that is the best way to use your, uh, to use the internet, actually. Well, I understand that, but I'm saying for people that live in families that are trying to live in the modern world, is a f- cell phone, a cell phone and a Wi-Fi and a Wi-Fi uh, or router the same thing? That if we're fifty feet away from a cell phone call uh, and fifty feet away from a Wi-Fi router, yeah, th- they can the be different. It, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of technical reasons 
why there can be different exposures. Some of the newest Wi-Fi routers that are coming out right now, they, they have a lot coming off of them. You don't want them in the bedroom. You don't want them certainly near your body. They're, they're quite powerful and they're not even, even when they're not on, even when they're not, you're not doing anything with them. So um, you would want to keep it as far away as possible if you're in a situation where you can't fix it for sure. However, okay. uh, we really do recommend getting a wire if you can. Not everyone has the ability to have it even be 40 feet. If you're in an apartment, you know, you've got it. Uh, how many people have I met? They have a Wi-Fi router in the bedroom. And what about um uh AirPods and people that are of like wireless headphones, how are these things? Um, so we don't recommend using wireless things in your ear at all, because that is, while it is a lower exposure, kids and adults use it all the time. So it's kind of like a constant uh, low level microwaves in your ear. And uh, we recommend using wire, a wired headset with an air tube so that uh, there's no, can't, no traveling for the electrical signal. So you can get an air tube headset, you know, low EMF air tube headsets. You can look that up. Those are available. Also, speakerphone is what we would recommend. Okay. So the big fat question that everyone wants to know is, there's loads and loads of companies saying amazing, amazing things about devices for the whole house, for your phone. Um, I want to believe it's so much. I want to do anything I can to be able to say I have this great thing. As a matter of fact, I even have this from a company called Blue Shield. You know, I don't know. The guy who it looked very good. It was very nice. They wrote good things. I'm not a scientist, but it sounded very good. I want to believe that it's protecting me. I really, really, really want to believe it's tr protecting me. Um, what are you finding about all these devices? Is anything work? Is anything help? Is anything proven to be effective? You know, we have not. So there have been so many studies just in the last decade that I've been working on this. We have not um, been able to or focused on assessing them because they change so much and there are not standards to understand what might be helpful and what might not because of the complexity of the issue. So we don't comment on all of these devices that are around. I can say, I mean, I, yeah, so I'm just not going to comment on uh, devices themselves. That's not something that we've, we've researched. Also our one, something that we really focus on is long-term effects. So I don't know that we, we don't have data or studies that are being done on people that are using devices uh, long term, and if they help, so I can't comment on that. I do know some people that say, you know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm going to go for it, but um, we we this is not the research that we do ourselves. So, but we, we want the companies to that we think I, the company should be coming up with ways to mitigate the exposure. Absolutely. Should we stop visiting New York City if they put up five G towers like? Am I at health, a health risk just by going to New York City if there are five G towers everywhere? I, yeah, I, you know these are these are important questions that are um, happening with all of these five G towers that are going up now. Those I should tell you something they have not been turned on the antennas. There's there has been no agreement signed, even though these big, ugly, gigantic cell phone towers are going up two thousand in New York. They have not. Those five tiers are not filled with antennas at this time. So we'll see what happens there. I do know that this is why, in addition to making changes in our personal life, and I know everyone probably who's watching is like, knows so much about uh, food and toxics and, and uh, you know, pesticides and uh, all of these issues, but we really need to, um, we, we really need to get, major change quite urgently with the companies uh, and the, 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 our government agencies in order to fix this. Mm -hmm.